Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So I've got loads of apples at the moment. We're getting loads of apples on the tree. It's absolutely chocker. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make some leathers from these apples and I'm going to make it in a traditional way using a traditional recipe. Now, this is something that you can do with apples that have got insect bites or bug bites or bird bites or anything like that. Or you can do this with windfall apples as well. So if you've got some apples that have fallen onto the ground and they're not good enough to be taken a bite into straight away, this is perfect. So come with me and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So what you're gonna need for this are a load of apples, some chili powder, salt, and we like to use, for added sweetness, we add a, a date molasses. So date molasses is absolutely fantastic for this. Now what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna start by peeling all the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start by peeling all the apples, sorry. And you want the skins off on these because you want a nice thin pulp. And I've got, I'm using about a bowl full of apples for this, so not, not just these three, I've got more um, apples than this. A lot of people have a, loads of apples or there's a, a spare or there's a wild apple tree somewhere and it's producing loads of fruit and it's all going to waste. Now this is a great way of making use of those apples that would otherwise go to waste. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start by chopping the apples. So quarters is fine and then just take out the cores because you don't want any of the rough stuff. You can see the seeds in these apples aren't mature, but you can do this with mature apples perfectly fine as well. Not a problem at all. So obviously the smaller you cut them, the faster you get through to the next stage as well. I'm going to give them a wash and make sure you've cleaned up everything. And I'm going to add them to the rest of the apples that I've got. Now don't waste that water because that water is really is full of nutrients and it's really good for watering your plants. I've got about a bowl full of apples and I'm going to use all of these for making my leather. So into this I'm going to add about a cup full of water. And that's all. You don't add too much water. I'm going to put this on the stove to boil. So I'm going to leave it there on the hob to boil down and reduce down and turn into mush. So while I'm waiting for the apples to cook down, I'm going to get the rest of my spices ready. Now this is homegrown garlic, so most of these ingredients are homegrown. So I'm going to take one, two, three, I'm going to take four cloves of garlic and I'm going to crush these. Now a quick tip when, you wanna, uh, when you've got garlic that you want to peel, or if you're peeling a lot of garlic, and you've got dry garlic is soak them for an hour or so and let them expand a little bit take on a bit of water and once that they've done that the skin peels off really easy the other option is just to give them a crush with a knife and the skin will just fall off into my mortar and pestle and then start mashing it up So the apples are boiling away and what I'll do is I'll give it a stir just so that, uh, that they all cook through nice and evenly. So I'm just giving the apples a bit of a stir making sure that the top, the stuff on the top is going to the bottom and getting even heat and it's not far off actually I mean there's a couple of big pieces so I'm just waiting for them to cook down but it's not far off. The thing with this is you don't want too much water into this so it's a good time now to turn the heat down and so it doesn't burn at the bottom either because it, normally what I'd do if I was cooking something else I'd add more water but you don't want too much water in here so turn the heat down and just let it cook through. 
So the apples have been on the boil now for about 25 minutes. Now let's give them a check. Now that the water's started to reduce down, you don't want them to bo you don't want them to burn. So I'm going to start mashing them just in case there's a use a potato masher. I'm just going to mash them, just make sure that there's no big bits left inside it. Because I want to take it off the heat. It's reduced down quite a bit. It's cooked down really well. And I don't want it to burn. So there we go. I've got it on a really low heat. I've had it on a really low heat for the last 10 minutes or so since I last did the check. So it's cooked down really nice actually. So it's time to add my spices now. I'm going to take a teaspoon of chilli powder and it goes. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to add my garlic that I crushed. That's time to go in as well. And I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of molasses. And this is date molasses that I'm using. So, one. Two. There we go. And I'm going to just use that tablespoon to mix it. Mix it all in. So I get all the molasses off the spoon. And as soon as you add that molasses, it's going to turn into a really dark, rich colour. And what you're going to get from the spices and the sweetness, you're going to get a really nice contrasting flavour. And this is the way my mum's been making it for years and years. And her mum before her as well. Hopefully the kids will be making it and you'll be making it as well. So now that that's all mixed in, I'm going to turn, it, turn the heat off. And that's it now, mixture's ready. I mean, one of the things about this is you don't need any fancy equipment. You're not going to need dehydrators and you're not going to need uh, any power tools. It's all by hand. Because it is a handmade process, it is going to take a little bit longer than if you're using some of the other, some more fancy equipment. So now the thing to do is to separate out all the really tough bits from the stuff that's from the really fine pulp. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to use this colander. So I'm just going to scrape it through the colander. You can do this while it's still hot. It's fine. Or if you really wanted to, you could use your hand, let it cool down and then use your hand. But because I'm doing it while it's still hot, I'm just going to use this spoon and scrape it through. So all the tough bits, you can see them separating out. And don't worry, they're not going to go to waste. You'll see it coming through the bottom, so just take it off, peel it off, there you go. And then start pushing it through again. I mean, the way my mum does this is she does it by hand, so it's a bit of a smoother process than trying to fumble about with this spoon. But it's too hot for me to stick my hand in there. So I've just about got to the end. And it's come through really nice. The easier way now is to get your hand on. So just wipe it all off, get your hand on. Don't worry about getting your hands involved in this sort of stuff. It's all traditional making, so that's all my pulp ready. And now I'm going to start spreading that out and ready to dry. So like I mentioned, you don't need any fancy tools to make this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, I'm going to use this tray. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to spread out some uh, mustard oil onto the... You want that just spread around, spread around the tray. So just use a, some a tissue or your hand or whatever's going to make it easy. And just spread it all around. Don't be don't be stingy with this because you want it you don't want it to stick. And mustard oil is a really good oil because it's quite spicy as well. So I'm just gonna pour everything on. And 
you spread this out now. You can make this as thick or as thin as you like. I mean, if you're gonna make it nice and thick, the best way to do it is to layer it. So make one layer, make, get it dry, and then put add on the next layer. But try and get it all <clears throat> as the same level as possible. So you don't want thick patches in one place and you don't want thin patches in another place. So get it as smooth and as firmly spread out, as evenly spread out as possible. So the methods that we're using, we're using traditional techniques, so no dehydrators, no um, fancy equipment involved. So that's pretty much it. There we go, it's ready now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start spreading this, we're gonna start drying this, and the way we're gonna dry it is we're gonna sun dry it. So I'm gonna leave this in the sun. So we're gonna sun dry this. I'm just gonna find a nice place on the coffee table, on the table in the garden. And we're just gonna leave it here and let it dry in the sun. It'll take a couple of days to dry out properly. So here are some that we've already made and you can see, you can see them, the, there's a few that we've already made here and different thicknesses. So that's a really thick one. That's a quite fine one. And in Bangladesh, they make these on uh, trays that are made out of bamboo, so weaved together and you get a really nice pattern on the back of them. So let's give this a taste. Absolutely delicious. You can fold these up and just store them in a plastic bag, you know, a sealed plastic bag or or in a jar or something, just something airtight. And these will store for well over a year, a couple of years. I mean, we've got stuff that we brought over from Bangladesh like this, and they've been stored for a couple of years now, and we just pick at them whenever we want to. You could cut these and store them into small pieces. You can leave them whole, regard however you want to do it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe for regular updates. I also make videos on Patreon, so if you wanna support this channel, that's a great place to go and support this channel. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.